I tell you I just recorded the first five minutes without recording? <laughs> oh, that is so fitting for the week that I've had. So this week on the podcast, we are going to um, just talk. I'm not going to multitask. I don't have it in me this week. Um, so we're just going to kind of talk about how my week has been. And we are going to talk about um, lupus and mental health or chronic illness and mental health, because um, I do believe that uh, lupus and some other illnesses are really are related. Um, and I think that if you have a chronic illness, there's a lot of um, the same stressors and mental things that you that we all deal with. So where was I? <laughs> all right. So we all know I broke my arm two weeks ago. Last week, um, after the swelling had gone down, um, the cast was too big. And so I could move my wrist like this inside the cast. I cannot do that anymore. <laughs> Um, so I called them and I said, Hey, listen, um, I sat down to eat my dinner last night. I was editing a podcast at the same time. So I was kind of like distracted doing, you know, I was multitasking <laughs> and, um, I kind of went like, like, you know, I had used oven mitts to pull dinner out of the oven, whatever, took them off, put them on the counter, came back in the, in the, um, room to eat. And I put my plate down and I looked over at my phone. I was uploading last week's, um, podcast and I went boop and took my cast off. And I was like, Oh, and I like put it back on. It was just like, there's something on my arm that shouldn't be there. And so I just took it right off. And so it was too loose. So, um, they told me to come on in that same day and, um, they would put a new one on. So now what I have is, um, it's a little tight. <laughs> I'm not going to complain about it because I just want my, uh, I just want my wrist arm, my radius. It's really in my wrist area, but it's an arm bone, whatever. I want it to heal properly. So I would rather it be tight than loose. And you see this, I'm always talking with my hands. You guys, my arm is so sore by the end of the day. Anyway, so a couple of things about the new cast, as you can see, I've got signatures from my friends, family and coworkers. I consider my coworkers friends. I don't know if they consider me friends, but all right, we're going to get to that. I love my job anyway. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, okay. So we'll start here. This is where I started when I was not recording <laughs> this part of it. Um, I think while it was still drying, um, I must have like been holding it or something. I don't know what I was doing, but there's like a lip on this part here. So it's like, if you ever put your arm down on like a table or something and there's like a, like a, I don't know, like a thing across it or whatever. And you hit your elbow. It's like that all the time. It's not my elbow though. It's up here, but it's still, I, I think there's going to be a bruise there when I get it off. And then, um, I don't know if you can even see this in here, but the cast goes like this and then it dents in here. Shh. Hey, Shh. it dents in right here. Um, so that's constantly digging in on this part of my thumb. <laughs> and then this part is where I figured out I wasn't recording last time. Um, this part, my hand is kind of scrunched. You see that? It's kind of like <coughs> scrunched. So I'm always like trying to stretch and stuff. But um, so anyway, so that was the beginning of my rough week. Shh, come here. My daughter's doing something with her dog out there. So they're freaking out. But, um, so anyways, um, you know, I was tired. I was having a rough week by the time Friday came around. Um, my husband was like, Hey, do you want to watch a movie tonight? And I was like, mm, can we just get like snacks and easy dinner and, um, maybe watch a couple episodes of a sitcom. We like everybody loves Raymond. Um, that's my trauma sitcom, if you know what that is. Um, but anyways, so, uh, he was like, yeah, that's fine if you want to. But then we ended up watching, um, a really old show. I can't think of the name of it. Anyway, um, I like it. It's okay. It's, it's an old sitcom and it's funny. <laughs> um, new Bob Newhart. Is that what it is? Maybe. I don't know. Anyway. So we watched a couple episodes of that. Um, we had dinner and then he actually made some popcorn. And by the time he brought the popcorn and I was like, no, I'm going to sleep. I'm tired. And, um, so 
I didn't have any popcorn. I went to sleep. Um, I had text my daughter. We're trying to start doing a monthly brunch, at least. And um, I had texted her on Friday morning and asked her if she would want to um, get brunch on Saturday. And she didn't answer me. So um, when I went to bed Friday night, I didn't set my alarm. And then I woke up to my phone buzzing on Saturday around like 10 o'clock. And she was like, sure, what time you want to go? <laughs> and um, so last time we had scheduled it, she worked a really late shift. And when I woke up that Saturday, I was not feeling good. And so I was like, I'm not blowing her off this time because I really didn't want to the first time, but it's really important to me. And I wanted to make sure that she knew that. So I didn't feel great, but I was like a lot of, a lot of mornings when I don't feel great, I get up, I go drink my coffee and sit on the couch and hang out with my husband before I start getting ready for work. And I start feeling better. So I did that and I told her, Hey, I'm going to sit out here and drink some coffee. Just let me know when you're going to start getting ready. And then I'll start getting ready. Cause otherwise I'll be waiting for her. <laughs> so she was like, okay, I'm going to start getting ready. So we got ready. Um, we went, we had a great brunch. We just went to like a little diner here and nothing spectacular. Cause we didn't do like a reservation or anything because she told me at 10 o'clock that we were coming. Um, but we've already scheduled next month. So we're going to go somewhere nice next month. Um, but anyways, so we went, it was really nice to just sit there and chat about, you know, stuff and what's going on in our lives and stuff. Because if you don't know, she's a first responder and, um, she works, you know, 13 hour shifts three times a week. But then on the other nights, she's not usually here when I come home because she also goes to the gym and works on cars and stuff like that. She just she's her own person, you know? And, um, so it was just really nice to get some one-on-one -on -one time, just the two of us. And, um, so as we were walking out, I was just thinking how grateful I was for that time with her. <laughs> Little did I know <laughs> it was about to be extended. <laughs> um, we walked out to my car and, uh, would not start like at all. And it's been having little like issues here and there, like it would stall and we knew it was an electrical thing, but her boyfriend was, um, is a mechanic. So he was going to look at it. So, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that we were just like, oh, it's fine. We'll get to it when we get to it. Well, we didn't get to it. So first things first, uh, we replaced the battery. We had, he came out and looked at it for us, but him and my husband, uh, looked at the car, he and my husband looked at the car and then we were like, yeah, okay, needs a battery. Um, Wayne got a battery, put that in it. It started and then it stalled. So we were like, we just need to get it started and get it home and then we can look at it further. So we did that. We got it started. Um, he was going to follow us home, but, uh, we were like out of there. We were like, no, we're getting this car home immediately. Uh, if you catch up to us, that means it died. <laughs> so, um, got the car home and they looked at it some more and it was the alternator. <laughs> so we went and got the alternator and he's like, do you care if I put it in tomorrow? And I was like, that's fine because I appreciated that he was doing the work for us. It was gonna save us a ton of money. So I was just like, listen, I will figure out how to get to work. I appreciate you helping out. Well, tomorrow was yesterday. And oh, and by the way, Saturday, um, while we were trying to figure out the battery situation, I was in the sun for two hours. So Saturday, done. I did nothing else Saturday. Oh, no, just kidding. Yesterday was Monday. So Sunday was the day that we got the alternator. Um, Sunday, I made myself get up. I made myself do my list. If you saw that on my Facebook page, um, Taming the Wolf Within, Living with Lupus, um, I had made myself a checklist and I made myself do everything but one item on that list. Um, so then yesterday was Monday and I woke up and I just felt terrible. Not like when I normally wake up and I'm like, all right, I'm going to go get my coffee and sit up and I'm going to feel better. I hadn't slept most of the night before. My husband was already talking to me about calling off at like two in the morning. He's like, you're not going to be able to go to work. 
Well, I do not like to call off work. So I actually messaged, um, I don't even like to call her my boss because she's not bossy, but my supervisor. <laughs> and I said, um, I said, listen, you know, like I had a really rough night, so I'm going to take a little time to get ready and then I'll be in. And she was like, listen, you don't have any pressing tasks today. You have paid time off. That's what it's for. Why don't you take the day if you need it? And I was like, man, I just, that's what I'm talking about though. Like when I talk about, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> the people at my job, um, I just love them because they are all so gracious. Um, they're, they're kind. And if you need help, they will help you, you know, like with work, I almost cried like my second or third day there because I was printing a huge document and no one was annoyed with me. And when it, when the printer ran out of paper, the girl that I sit next to got up, took my copies off the paper, brought them to me or off the printer, brought them to me. So I didn't have to get up and go get them. And then she went and replaced the paper. And my old job, that would have never happened. And I told them, I was like, you don't understand what a big deal that was to me coming from the toxic environment that I came from. And so, you know, to have a supervisor that, number one, I think that she recognizes that I don't want to just, you know, not work. I love working. Um, it is difficult at times, but they're just so wonderful and understanding about it, you know. And, um... So for her to say, you know, if you need it, take it. That's what it's there for. Not, you know, like, oh my gosh, blah, blah, blah. you know, I know you all know that boss. That boss is way more common. The one that's like, oh, you never come to work. Oh, blah, blah, blah. You know, because when we can, we will. And when we're there, we're going to give 100%. At least I am. So anyway, so I stayed home yesterday and I really did recover and I slept so good last night. We did watch a movie last night and we did eat popcorn last night. So we did get to have our little uh, quality time sesh, but um, I, I slept great last night. I did have a nightmare about my husband though, <laughs> but it's stupid. But anyway, so there's that. So this morning we got up and my husband, I forgot that he was gonna take me to work cause I forgot my car was broken. And, um, so this morning, um, I texted him and I was like, I had a bad dream. Can you come in here? You know, like, mm, I'm sad now. <laughs> and he came in and or I asked him if he was still here and he came in and he was like, well, yeah, I got to take you to work. And I was like, oh, I forgot you had to take me to work. So then we went out to get in the car and we asked our daughter to come move the car that she's driving and it wouldn't start. Yeah. And so her car's in the back and it won't start and his car is in front of hers facing forward so he can't even jump her car so we have like a charger so he hooked that up it wouldn't start it wouldn't start it wouldn't start and i had been texting um one of my co-workers who is a friend of mine um and i was like hey listen um are you gonna be at work today because i might need a ride home and she was just like oh no i think i have to leave early today because um her daughter-in-law is having a baby and I was like oh, okay that's fine I'll figure it out if I have to uber at least I got to go to work and earn that money right so um she was like hey I'm right by your house you want me to pick you up for for work and I was like yes because I just found out I don't have a ride <laughs> so she picked me up and took me in and um and it was it was a really good day I got a lot of work done I had lunch with my supervisor's supervisor and that was really nice um again she it, it's just this company is just I'm very blessed to be here and you know we kind of talked about my future plans with the company and stuff like that and it's so nice to have that conversation right so anyway I was saying all of that to say that it is so important to to find the things that are good and amazing in your life and focus on those because I mean right now I want to cry because I'm so blessed about my job right I'm blessed with my job not because my car's broken down and the car my daughter's driving is broken down and <laughs> my husband was like 
on one this morning because he was just like, oh, it couldn't get any worse. Of course it can. It can always get worse. And we've seen worse. What I do know is that it can get better and it's going to get better. And um, so that's why I just wanted to kind of take some time and talk for this podcast. And also I wanted to address um, mental health because one of the um, groups that I'm in on Facebook, um, people keep posting anonymously about how lonely and sad and depressed they are. And I'm seeing that so much. And so I really wanted to take the time to check in and see how everyone's doing. Um, It's not easy. It is not easy to focus on the positive, to look for um, the things that are exciting in your life when there are things that are bad that are right in your face, right? Yesterday, um, my son took me grocery shopping because I didn't have a car. And I don't like to ride my husband's car because we live in Florida and he doesn't have AC and he's fine with that. So my son took me and instead of being upset about it we were both just like that's cool I get to hang out with you for an hour you know and I just made sure that I had my meal plan ready that was on my list and I had my grocery list ready um I just made sure that I was ready to do the grocery shopping when he had time to do it so that I wasn't wasting his time and so that I could also enjoy my time with him um coffee makes me happy I know that it can be um inflam it can cause inflammation (laughs) for some of us you know coffee is one of those like little treats that I allow myself to have um so I also got an email today from our human resources department where we talk about you know the different things I'm playing with a zip tie if you hear that click 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 (laughs) um we talk about the different um awarenesses for the month and um i believe it's suicide prevention awareness week i want to say um so i thought that was a good time to talk about uh, mental health so i am going to put the number for the national suicide prevention hotline um right here because I want to make sure that if you need it, you have it. And I don't want to miss the opportunity to share it with you. Um, there have been times where I have been so down that um, I, I didn't want to be here anymore. Um, those times did come after uh, my son was born. So fortunately, Um, all I had to do was think about him and being a mom and I didn't want to cause that kind of impact on them. So, um, I'm going to share one little story from my time in the hospital and regardless of what your faith is, um, I hope that you can, you can experience something like this as well. So when I was in the hospital initially, and they had given me two weeks to live, um, you know, they were like, there's nothing we can do. I was at the first hospital. Um, in my first episode, I told you, you know, the doctor would come in my room, like clockwork every night around 10, 30, 11 o'clock and sit in the chair, you know, in the hospital, you have the, the bed and then you have like a chair that's like right against the wall across from it typically. And he would sit there and he would just look at my file and I couldn't tell if he was crying or, you know, but it, it, I mean, he looked like he was, he would take his glasses off. He would rub his eyes. He put his glasses back on. And, you know, then the one night I just sat up and I was like, listen, I am 21 years old. I'm an adult. Just tell me, am I going to die? And he said, probably. And I know I already told you that in the first episode. And if you already saw that, you already know this but what you don't know unless you've been through it also is that reality stops 
when that happens because what you thought to be reality has just completely shattered. It's completely changed because, you know, you thought you had all this time and I was 21 and he was telling me I wasn't going to see my son's next birthday. I wasn't going to see, you know, the next holiday. I, two weeks is a very short time, right? Two weeks is notice you give to quit your job, not the world, you know? And, um, so whenever that happened, I had been raised in church. Um, never really, it was, it was very like structural though. You know, it wasn't like, you know, having a relationship with God, which is something that I learned, um, later when I moved to central Florida. But when that happened, the only thing that I knew to do was to start praying. And so I did, I started praying and at first it started out what, you know, like, um, this isn't right. This can't be happening. You know, stuff like that. Like, please heal me. I promise I'll change my life. You know, all this stuff. <laughs> I was not a bad person, but I was just like, whatever you want, just tell me I'll do it. To this day, I'm still waiting to find out what he wants me to do. <laughs> but, um, you know, you go through the steps of, um, of grief and you have, you know, denial and anger, um, and negotiation. And so I was like, listen <laughs> to God, listen, I know you have this elaborate plan and you think you've thought everything out, but I'm here to tell you, you have not because I'm the only person who can raise my son the way that he needs to be raised. And I really need you to reconsider what's happening here. And so for nights, I would be like, God, please, please let me raise my son. No one else can raise my son like I can. Please let me raise him. I love him more than I love myself. I have to be the one to raise him. And when I would pray like that, it would be pitch black in my room, except for the little lights coming off of the machines and the only noises that you would hear is like the psh, psh, you know and then the like the machines that are pushing the the IV fluids through and stuff like that but it felt like something very calming was in the room with me and then one night like somebody was standing there talking to me but not out loud he said to me, no one can raise your son like you can, but not even you can raise your son like I can. Yeah. And I was like, message received. <laughs> and I was like, all right. So I wanted to start making videos for my son. I wanted to start doing all these things for him just so, you know, he wouldn't suffer this trauma, um, from me being gone. And, um, I started to come to acceptance with what was happening and that there was a real possibility that I would die very soon. And the next day, my platelets started to come back up. Um, all these things started coming together. I got my transfer to Miami, um, to be in the university hospital and get all of these treatments that I would have never had access to. If I had stayed where I was at, I would have died in that hospital, but I was able to be transferred and things started to look up. And my son is going to be 25 next month, not next month in November. I think it's October cause I'm sick of September, <laughs> but, um, so 23 years and, uh, it really, you know, I have to rely on that. I have to rely on the word of God. I truly believe that that was God speaking to me. Now, 
God who? I'm not going to tell you who to believe in. You have to make that decision for yourself. But I do hope that you believe in something. And I really think that that will help you um, with your mental struggles, with your health struggles. And if you ever need someone to talk to, I want you to know that you can message me and I will do my best to help you with my, within my abilities. And I will definitely, definitely pray for you. So if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Make sure you like this video and give me a follow if you would like to see more of my experience with lupus. And um, I hope that I've helped even just one person. You guys have a great week. Bye. You guys, I forgot to tell you about my shirt. Hey, you're fine. All right. So this is what it looks like. Um, I was making these shirts last, uh, this weekend. That was one of the things that I was doing that was on my list. And there's another shirt that I will post right here, right there, so that you can see that one as well. And if you guys are interested, let me know, because I am selling them. Thanks. Bye.